Hello and we are here. You caught us just dancing because we were dancing to the theme song. Um but I didn't oh, wow. tell I didn't tell Ben that I was changing the screen. So yes, you are here for your Saturday night edition of Fleetcast and this week we are reviewing Dots and Bubble. Before I get before I say anything else, I am gonna get the disclaimer out of the way. Because this episode is possibly the most controversial episode of Doctor Who that we have reviewed. But the opinions expressed in this episode are ours and ours alone. That's it. That's it. They are just ours. You can come and tell us we're wrong, but we do not have the... We don't have to listen to you. We don't have to do anything you like you say. It's our opinions. Yeah, because I agree with you. I actually think this might be the most controversial episode of New Who. Yeah, I 100% think this is um, the most controversial episode. But yes... Hello, and Ben. I, hello. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had a couple of comparisons to make. <laughs> okay, uh, so yes. So this episode, and... sorry, this episode is definitely the most controversial. So we definitely had to put a disclaimer there. So I asked to owe Ben an apology because he got caught dancing. Um, I was dancing, but I obviously clicked the buttons, so I <laughs> stopped dancing. It's fine, you just got me at the end of the Macarena. Yeah, so Ben was doing the Macarena, I was just <laughs> I was just doing with the flow. I was doing with the flow. Um, but yes, so Ben has a couple of comparisons for this episode, which I think are important because I think, yeah, go on, just, I'll let you Just go. in terms of how controversial it is and sort of something. So, first of all, the one that I'm going to compare it to, which I think you may get why I'm giving it this comparison was episode I believe it was three or four of Star Trek The Next Generation, an episode called Code of Honor. Yep. Uh, which uh, uh, I can't actually directly quote what Jonathan Frakes described it as at a convention but he called it a racist piece of... Yeah, it's it's definitely... But li- that's the literal yeah, quote. Yeah, that is that is the quote and it <clears> is very much theme of this episode it's very yeah. much about racism and i was doing a little bit of research on this and i didn't realize that they actually wanted to do this type of episode way back with like matt smith okay they actually wanted to do this episode with matt smith but they had um they had rory and amy amy um and it just they didn't feel that it would hit the right notes at that point no but how this episode then came back around was um, it was inspired by responses um, Russell T. Davis had actually heard in regards to the casting of the Doctor. Mm. And the commentators were remarking that um, with Doctor Who now played by a back- black man, stories descripting him experiencing racism when they could like do it while he travelled to the past. And Davis was like... Why would they just be racist in the past? And he was he was very much struck mm. with the assumption that racism in the future, as we are fully aware, isn't just something of the past. And I thought it was such a great stance for him to take. I know we have got very, very different opinions on this episode. Well, uh, the the funny thing is, so I will I will get this part out of the way now. I do not like this episode. Okay. Yes. Um, however, I am not a, in any way, shape, or form bashing it for its subject matter or what it's going yes. for. Uh, I feel the execution was somewhat lacking. Yes. And that is where my issue stems from. And ye- we've had discussions about this. For the- we've had yeah. discussions over this episode in various forms over the last couple of episodes. And it very much suffers from the fact that it's the second Doctor Light episode in a row. Yeah, um, that had my back up from the word go. Yes, and like... I think I think that's I think that's very much what got <clears throat> several people's backups because I think if this episode was maybe done I after actually... the next one, I think it would I have ha- been. I think it would have been a better episode layout. I actually would have. Qu- so I've been thinking about episode layouts. Okay. 
I actually think this episode would have been very, very good in the spot where either the Devil's Cord or Boom went. Put it very, very early. Yeah, yeah. But we are going um, to be doing an episode once we get back to the timey wimey wheel around this, aren't we? We are going to rewrite this season of Doctor Who. <laughs> and just put it in an order that works. Yeah, yeah. We, we are going um, to put it in the best order. And I think it's going to be called um, Doctor Who... Becca and Ben edition. Yeah, and also <laughs> I saw a YouTube video the other day. Um, there's this channel, I believe, I think it's called Type 40 Productions, I can't remember, but he does rewrites of Doctor Who. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, and he the one he did recently was discussing um, what if David Tennant had stayed for season one, series 1 slash series 14. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Because uh, obviously, the whole reason why um, we got two Doctor Light episodes like this is because the shooty wasn't quite free. He wasn't free because he was still feeling Where... sex education. Whereas at the time, David Tennant was very free. Yeah. So they could have just done a series of 14. They, they could have. And I, I don't actually know why they didn't. The thing is, I actually have a hunch on this. I okay. think. As it stands, they were already getting lots of people going on about, oh, you're getting rid of David Tennant again. Why, why are you doing that? Blah, blah, blah. If they kept him for a whole series, that would have just got dialed up to an 11. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Like, but I, I also do think that very much like Trek fans, very much like Marvel fans, Doctor Who fans are never happy, no matter what they do. No. Um, like, for, for bleeding next sake, I mean, I... So, in my opinion, probably the best Star Trek we have had in the last, like since DS9 ended, is probably Strange New Worlds. I, I can agree with you purely on the musical episode, yeah. The musical episode is an absolute... And by the way, if you ever get around to reviewing those on the po- on this podcast and you don't have me on, I will be very, very upset. To be fair, I think <laughs> we'll probably never review those ones in the format that we're doing because yeah. out of all the people that have watched it, I think we would probably do it by season. I'd, yeah. probably, I'd probably say that. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that, that we've had all this Trek, but no one's been happy with it. You know, no, I mean, it's, that's what I was getting at. E- like, even saying Strangely was the best Star Trek we've had since DS9 finished, because I, <laughs> I make no secret, I am a DS9 fanboy, and not just because the captain's got my first name. Um. To be fair, I actually think Cisco is one of the best captains they had in Star Trek when he's not being war crimey. Like, yeah, we'll get it, that out. Get that out there. Yes, when he's yeah, not I'll, doing war I'll, crimes. I'll, I'll put that disclaimer on there. When he's not committing war crime, he's still one of the best. And also, when he's not getting hung up on being space Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but then you've got obviously everything that comes after that, and Strange New Worlds is. In my personal opinion, very much a return to form mm-hmm. for Star Trek. See, I really liked Discovery. I'm not going to lie. I really, 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 really liked Discovery. Because it, I gave loved... me, it gave me the Mirror Universe, and you can't take that away from me. Oh, I love the Mirror Universe arc. That, that was the one part of season one I enjoyed. And I have, I have you know, Ethan Peck as um, that Spock. Was... I I'll love that what... casting. I love that casting. And that gave you that gave you Strange yeah. New Worlds, Mr. I'll tell you, you what, know? I I hated that casting in Discovery. Purely because they did not have him playing Spock as Spock. But he wasn't Spock. He was playing Spock before before Spock. Well, no, because you sort of start seeing shades of it as the season goes through. Because because then he's becoming Spock. And, and then by... he wasn't Spock. <laughs> yeah, and then finally you get the point where he hits full Spock. In the musical episode, uh, in the middle of his musical number. <laughs> I am the ex. Love it. Yeah. And it li- <sighs> that is just literally that you even see him going from sort of the Strange New Worlds version of Spock to, as I call him, proper Spock. Do you know, sorry, I think me and you are just going to review that episode. <laughs> yeah. I think we should. I just, think we just did. I just, I, yeah, I think we need to review that episode properly. But yes, getting back to the Dotter bubble, <laughs> I think this episode is. It's just so controversial, but I kind of want to go through a couple of facts beforehand. That um, this title, this um, episode, actually went through various titles beforehand, such as Monsters, Monsters Everywhere and mm-hmm. IRL. 
as in in real life, which is if anyone is old like me and Ben are. Yeah. Um, that's tech speak for like how it in used real to be life. in real life. Yeah, it's how it used to be done back in the day with the MSN Messenger. I actually think that would have been a better title. Yes. Um, and then what am I? There's a couple of other more facts that I kind of have. Oh, okay, so the other fact I've got, because I've got, I've got them all laid out. So this episode on Disney Plus mm. is was actually, you know, starting with this episode, uh, Doctor Who was actually um, put into Disney's Pride collection um, because obviously Nuguti gets what I would have thought it would have been the next life. episode. No, it's this one because obviously the comments that he makes later on about Ricky September. To be fair, I mean, I refer you back to 14's comments on Sir Isaac Newton. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so and this, also this, I... this is where it kind of, the, it gets put into the career section for Disney yeah, Plus, which I, I absolutely love. I'll also refer you to the fact that people are getting stroppy about, because, so, what makes me laugh is people go, oh, so the Doctor's gay. I was like, no, the Doctor's bisexual, which is blatant what makes perfect sense for the character. He is from a species that changes their gender as a matter of their life cycle. Yeah. Like, to be quite honest, it will probably be weird on his planet to be heterosexual or homosexual. It would yeah, just be, it would be, it's, this it's is just, what makes sense. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work for Doctor. Time but, Lords. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work for Time Lords. But yes, so this episode, I kind of, but this being a very, very Doctor Light episode, I kind of like how it starts. Obviously, it starts with Lindy Pepperbe- Pepperbean, which is such a fantastic name. It's such which, a, it's such a, it's such a fantastical fantasy name. I absolutely just love it. Her. It sounded like something out of a children's book. Yes, and you know, um, all, how it starts, all, it feels very much like that with the colours, like it's very pastel yeah. shades. Uh, I am going to take one second to say because. The actress who plays her is very, very good in this. She is so good. And we, um, we've, just, we've discussed this privately that I I don't think she deserves the hate that she does get. She deserves... Uh, the character deserves the, the hate. The character... The, the, the actress was fantastic. I mean, what I love is because she's now in a show called Piglets on ITV. Yes, yeah. Which, have you been watching it? I haven't, but you, I, I've kind of saved yeah. it to watch because... Gave me that recommendation. I've got the so I've watched the first three so far, but I watched that and I was like, she's playing very. I'm like, she's just making a career out of playing incredibly stupid blondes. Yes, um, and it's just like I love it. I yeah. absolutely love it. You know, I'm trying to see. You know, what's the character? What's the character's name? Callie Cook. You know, she's a fantastic, mm. fantastic actress. Ah, oh, I didn't realize she was in Hen Apocalypse. Um, yeah. which is a BBC program. Um, and obviously she's in known as that one. Uh what other programs has she been in? She's been in uh Wedding Season, she's been in Dot and Bubble, Piglets, she's in mm. uh Rules of the Game, Cheaters, um she started on Doctors, which is basically quite essential British programme where everyone I think pretty much starts. I've never actually watched it. If not, you should. Yeah. I think you'd like it. Um. Yeah. So she's done. She's done quite a lot of different things. Um. But we kind of basically wake up. You know, we wake up with Lindy, and they're in the city of Fine Time, which is populated by white, wealthy young adults from the nearby homeworld. And basically, they're sh- they're in this city that's shielded from the dangerous um woods that surround them. And they basically they live the social media influence, and they literally have a bubble. <laughs> around around their heads with a floating dot. Yeah. Um and I've also got a flag. I did not notice until my rewatch of this, which I did for this podcast. Yeah. Um because I didn't clock the profile pictures when she was calling them. No, I just I saw the na- I saw the names on it. So I hadn't noticed that all of her friends were white as well. I thought Oh well, maybe it's just, like when I was first watching through, I thought, oh, but like maybe sort because of, generally speaking, when you see, particularly in Britain, if you see groups of young people, you will quite often see ma- the majority of them will fit into a single 
like ethnic group and then there'll be a few people within that group that fit into different ones and this goes in all directions um so i thought oh maybe sort of the few that fit into the fit into those other groups have already been got and i legitimate until i rewatched it i was like hang on a minute no there's pictures you can actually it's see them all so subtle it's yeah. so subtle and this is why i think it was so genius because the racism is hinted at um it's hinted at very very few times but obviously it's the way it's done is just so subtle like when the doctor first appears she mm. immediately blocks him but then later on this is obviously me jumping a couple of steps ahead oh yeah when Ruby appears, she's outraged, but she's not. She doesn't instantly dismiss him. The th the thing is with Ruby, she and this is why I got to my original thought process that I had right until the end when they do that twist. And I was like, oh, okay, I didn't get that at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I thought they were going for the typical stuck up snobby kids. Yeah, and you know, yeah, because Ruby is because is Ruby younger. just starts to pee. And also, Ruby starts appealing to her ego and her hubris. Yeah, she very, very much does. But it's very genius in how they do this. And I really like this this scene, of, of obviously, of uh, the girl waking up. Because it does kind of show everything that we need to know in the first five minutes. It shows how social media influences them and how they do it. And this has my favourite part of this episode, is they have... Ricky September up here, and he sings one of my favourite songs from my childhood. It was actually a slightly altered cover. Yes. And I tell you what, this song was part of the reason why I had to turn the episode off when I started rewatching it, because it got stuck in my head. And it's I, it's, it's, it's whole episode, such a British thing to have this song I was stuck in your head. I was humming that song throughout the whole episode. I'm like, I'm not actually focused on this. I'm not actually... <laughs> I, in the end when i was doing the sort of bit when i was rewatching it again earlier yeah i basically had to skip the bits where that song plays because it does appear so many times and, I was and saying, it was just as soon as i heard the opening to that song i was just like no skip skip five seconds yeah yeah <laughs> but it's it's such a good way to use music in this song and obviously we've well, got Sorry, go on. No, 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 you're good. Go. I was going to say, also, it's entirely diegetic. Like, there's not actually a lot of non-diegetic music in this episode. Which, that's one point that I will give it. Like, so, like, whatever my other issues may be with it, from a production standpoint, it is very, very clever. Yeah. And, like, if nothing else, got to respect game. Like. Yeah, you know, I th as per usual, I think the music is very, very well done in this episode. Um, but yes, yeah, so we get the moment where the Doctor appears on Lindy's um, bubble. Um, and then obviously Lindy wipes him away and she carries on brushing mm -hmm. her teeth. And then we have Ruby appearing. And obviously it kind of very much, she kind of coaxes Lindy very slowly in dropping her bubble. I uh, love this bit as well. It's the way it's done. You know, she is very, very... Lindy's a very like, I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. I don't need to know that they're they're, they're here. They're, 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 two, they're two feet away from me. So Ruby's like, well, drop your bubble then. And it's the way that she goes, oh, well, we only have to work for two hours a day. The rest of the time we can party. And I'm just like, oh, my I'm God. I'm jealous. I'm, I'm, I was like... Mm. Also, the bit where you were basically just discussing how she's basically playing like a spoiled child was very much making me think of our conversation before we started recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I could... <laughs> that, that's why I sat there trying not to For laugh. anyone who doesn't know, I am on, like, day thousand of the school summer holidays in the UK, and I am done. My child needs yeah. to go back to school. Yeah. And she's, 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 she's tiny and she's blonde, and... Yeah, you know, she very much does act like Lindy in this moment, where Lindy's like, oh, I don't want to do it. I'm just like, all right. The mum in me just wanted to go up to this child and go, just do it. 
But yes, she drops the bubble after the Doctor and Ruby say to her, oh, we need to do it. We need to know what's happening. We need to see what's outside. Mm. And I don't know how to describe this scene because he very much is terrified. Yeah, and initially all she sees is a very ordinary office space with no one else there. And then she slowly looks around. And there's a dude being eaten by a giant slug. Yes. And she goes, Dot Bubble. And obviously the bubble comes back <laughs> up. And then we and... have we have the doctor. The doctor who appears goes, Your your rain levels have increased. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because that was the whole thing at the start. Like your urine levels are zero for the third day in a row, which I thought. Um, and also, so... on the rewatch, I was like, but they're meant to be partying all the time. No, that should be at about 120% yeah, of the yeah. time. Yeah, but I was, I was very confused <laughs> by that, but it was just the way, it was so subtle. Um, and then, but then, she, but then I, I, she tries to then warn her friends, and obviously we get a proper look at her friends, and we get like her, all of her different friends. I've got to say their names because they are just fantastic names. So you have Hopper Miracy, Harry Tendency, Gucci Pie, Valerie Nook, the Lake Very Blue, Gothic Pool, and I then like you have one. the Rotterdam Twins. Oh, and then you have Weatherman Phil, Will, I think. Yeah, Weatherman. And then Penny. Penny. Pe- oh, no, wait. That's that's a different character that we need to get to in a second. That's a different that, character. That, that's much later, isn't it? That's definitely. That's le- that's very, very much later, yes. That, 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 that's. That's, yeah. that's 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 a twist. Uh, can, can we just get like a little gif of River Song saying spoilers in the corner? Spoilers, yeah. Oh, I will. I'll do that for next time. I'll do that for next time. But yes. Or or, or the Doctor just that's no Capaldi. It's yes. gotta be when Capaldi did it. Yes. <laughs> um. But then obviously the Doctor and Ruby instruct Lindy and all her friends to evacuate fine time via the conduits leading to an underground river, and. I love this part because this is the moment where Lindsay realizes that the doctor and Ruby are together and she realizes that the doctor is the guy she blocked earlier. Yeah, yeah, she realizes, but she hasn't up until this point, which I was a bit like, hang on. On the rewatch, that was when I was like, oh, hang on a minute, they are actually being a little bit more clever about this because it's that there's this stereotype that a lot of people have that any one of a different ethnicity to you looks they all look exactly the same yes. which i can confirm is not the case yes uh for example i do not mix my girlfriend up with my colleague henry yes and obviously <laughs> but the fact is that you know at this moment it is you don't realize she, when Lin, when lindy realizes she just goes oh i thought you just look the same and it's just you don't you don't realize you literally mm. do not realize until the moment at the end Hmm. this this is actually happening um but yeah and obviously she views and what i like is then this is the moment when we kind of get a we kind of get a glimpse that things are happening that are similar they're very same you know we, we might be onto a theme now because hmm. the doctor and ruby start asking her why is she different? What? Why? Why? What? What's different about you? And she goes, "There's nothing different about me. I've got a mum." And then obviously she shows a picture of her mum. She starts listening to a picture from her mum. Yeah. And who is it? Susan Twist. Susan Twist, who is, um, she's Penny Pepperbean. Mm. She is the mum, and that's what her name is. You know, she's a very, very grand lady. She's, you know, she's got her hair coiffed and up. She's got uh, pearls. Uh, and as the doctor points out, she was the ambulance. Yes, and several other and, things that we've... Thought... Yeah, and, and Ruby recognised her from somewhere, but she's not sure where. Yeah. But, but maybe a hiking lady somewhere. No, she doesn't, she doesn't make she the doesn't, connection. She, doesn't she remember, can't remember but, but she doesn't remember that timeline, so she's not going to... But, she, but she, re- she, she recognises her from several different things. Well, no, because if you remember the established episode, she sort of gets this deja vu from stuff from that timeline. Yeah, 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 yeah I, no, you are right. I yeah. took it to be the same thing. I took it to be that again. Yeah, but then they, they kind of go back and forth, and then they realise, wait, no, we need to help we need to help lindy so yeah. they kind of that's kind of sidelined that side quest is kind of sidelined and they go back to the problem at hand um and obviously they kind of eventually 
but Lindy gets outside, and th this is the point where I was just like, Lindy, please do yourself a favor, love. Just, just, just go. Just move. Mm. You'll be fine. It's just like I don't know how to walk about my bubble. <laughs> that was actually earlier, but I love it because of the fact that she's. They're like, what? Oh yeah, it happens there, and then obviously it then happens. It happens again because she's she doesn't know how to walk about the bubble because then the bubble. Is... would tell her where to walk yes um and obviously she kind of goes out she goes outside and she kind of hides she kind of has another conversation with the doctor but then her bubble her dot in her bubble battery dies battery dies and she's like which i love ruby's reaction you still have battery problems yeah yeah <laughs> and um the fact that she's and lindy's like but i was also, meant to charge at her work you stopped me working also can we just acknowledge Ruby's reaction is you still have battery problems, sort of shocked indignation. We saw in the previous episode, Ruby uses a Google Pixel, a phone which, generally speaking, actually has a pretty decent battery. Well, that's what I mean, you know, the girl, the girl she, she, she knows what she likes, and she knows that batteries should last longer. Hmm. But yeah, so obviously, <laughs> Linda's trying to invade, avoid these these aliens i don't know are they given a name they're not given a name are they no they're not they're, they're not given they're a just name. slug things yeah we'll call them slugs so basically the slugs with teeth she she basically tries to avoid but she, she doesn't actually know how to walk which and... i found quite funny because after dealing with some teenagers recently who literally don't know how to do anything about social media this episode didn't feel that too far out there i was like I, it was believable to me because I, that these people don't know how to do things the thing is the social media bit i actually really love mm -hmm. as a commentary for society oh god yeah because up up until the very end i thought that was what this episode was going for 100%. i thought it i thought it was a pure commentary on how dependent yeah. on social media 100%. society has become and i mean for, for bleeding next sake you've literally oh, well I refer you to, there was something I was watching earlier on um, Legal Eagle, where social media is so prevalent that, first of all, Elon Musk, one of the richest men, in fact, he is the richest man in the world now, isn't he? I know, I don't, I try certainly one of, but he turned around, he bought a social media platform, but he then started suing people for not taking advertising on that platform. Yes, yeah. Because of the fact that it was adversely hurting the business. Yeah. And it's just like, has social media become this prevalent? But to that be there fair, are now court Russell cases T built on it. Russell T. Davis is a genius because I am pretty sure that he can see the future. Like I, I no, am... he's not the Simpsons. No, no, I'm a hundred percent convinced he can see the future. I that is my own head canon. I am a hundred percent sure he can see the future in some way. Um, he must have an alien hiding in his cupboard. He's got a seer. He, I don't know. But what I don't what know. it is, is he can lift off his upper body and there's a little alien piloting Precisely. his legs. You know, I, like in I, Men in Black 2. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I think Russell T. Davis is... He's either that or he's from the future. Yeah, you know, but, he's time-travelled. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is my theory and this is my headcanon and I, I don't care because I think some of the things that he has come up with in this series this season alone are just genius mm. you know we had it last week with the russian war and things like that and just some of the things yeah that, yeah yarp. <laughs> um just some of the things that he has come up with it's just it's just genius and i yeah mm. i just i rate the man as a writer and but yes this i know you don't quite rate him quite as highly um i rate him a lot of the time yeah i just think sometimes he gets a little self-indulgent and a big bit big for his boots I think he's allowed to because he can see the future. Uh, <laughs> I, I I just think that he had more grounds to be big for his boots back in two thousand five to two thousand nine. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! But yes, so Lindy is outside. She is struggling to um, get through these mass of slug monsters, and then we meet Ricky September. <sighs> Ricky September. Who? Right, he is my favorite character in this episode. Yeah, mine too. But don't get wrong. The guy play don't get wrong, the guy playing him. He's got this sort of sweet naivety about him. Yeah, and occasionally does come across a little bit wooden. Yeah, because I know that a lot of the criticism for this episode was on 
oh, a lot of the guest cast can't act. Yes. Uh, I will, like, he's not going to win any acting awards. But, but I he actually is, do he think, is very good. I do think and that I, was part of the character, though, because yes. and he, there's a certain, yeah, Sorry. there's that earnest naivety about him. Yes. And yeah. you can't help but like him. And also, what's very interesting is when we get to the point where he gets shown the Doctor and Ruby, he's the only person to not actually go, what the hell, when he sees the Doctor in some way, shape or form. Yeah. Th there is an implication that he is the one decent person on this entire planet. Yeah, but I also think that shows, because obviously Ricky September helps, helps Lindy. They get inside this building and... Ricky September realizes that the homeworld are not going to come to rescue them because he contacts they're them. They're dead. Hmm? They're dead. Oh, they're dead. Yeah, they're dead. They, they're gone. <laughs> um, so he realizes that, and but he actually keeps that knowledge from Lindy in a, in a way to protect her. And I think that's just, I think that's really sweet. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, and I said this to you earlier on today, a lot of his interactions with Lindy, it feels like he is basically the Doctor stand-in for this segment of the episode. Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that totally, but I think he is that type of Doctor character that when yeah. we needed the good, we needed the good guy, or we yeah. needed that type of character. But yeah, I I can agree to some respect, but I do think it kind of shows. In in what we learn about him as it, as we go on, obviously we get downstairs and obviously he's the one who starts putting in the code. But we learn and, and more also, about him. Yeah, I mean, first of all, this is the one reason why he is the single best person on this planet. He go he goes on his social media for a maximum of two hours a day to record yeah. his videos. Then he turns it all off and sits there and reads books. Yeah, and he he knows about the whole. He knows about the area. He's learned things. You know, it's like, good, good God, that like, that there's a person on this planet with their head screwed on. Yeah, and bless <laughs> him, and he, you know, he does, he does do really well, and this is why I very much think he is the best person on here. And like you said, <laughs> he doesn't have that "what the hell" reaction to the Doctor. So I, he's just like, oh, it's a dude. <laughs> yeah, I generally think he isn't the same as everyone else. I don't think he uh, has that same the, type of the. The inference that I made watching it earlier was he basically try. Uh, so when he's doing his sort of social stuff, he tries to portray himself as yeah. being the same as everyone else for the sake of his fans. Yes. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, he's like, "No, I'm just gonna do my own thing." Yeah, and you can kind of get that because obviously, when you meet him in real life, Lindy mm. can't quite believe that it's him because he's very, very different. He doesn't yeah, obviously. He... If you look at when we do, when he's on his videos, it's very. Um, it's very what's the word i'm looking for it's um it's got a lot of he's just being he's just pretty he's pretty but he's got a lot of mm. oh what's it called what are they called i'm gonna look on now i'm gonna look on filters Zoom. that's it that's the word i was looking for filters um he's got he a lot, a of, lot he's, of he's filters. got a lot of filters and, and you know things like that i think he also uses it to hide who he is um yeah because also i've got to very quickly rush, run back mm -hmm. to the point where she first meets him the bit where um, which this is one of the only sweet things you get with Lindy in the entire episode. The bit where she hugs him. Oh, my heart. Really and heart. she said, like... "Yeah," and then she's like, "She's never been hugged before." I know. Uh, but then also, you, what I quite like is you've got that commentary of sort of society as it is now. Because if a if a woman brushed up against a man by accident, generally speaking. No one's got to forgive you. If a man brushes up against a woman, they go, oh, sexual harassment. Mm. And he, he immediately apologises because he assumes that's what she's going to think. Yeah. And she's like, oh, no, no, it's my fault. It's fine. Yeah. That is, again, one of the few things where it's like, my God, she's actually being a reasonable human being. Yeah. Like, what's going on here? And I think, <laughs> I do think, Lindy is a nicer person when she's with with him. With him, um, she doesn't have that peer pressure. I don't think. The thing is, the rest of the time she's trying to be the most important, most popular person in the room. Whereas earlier on in the episode, there's point when he first shows up. It literally says Ricky September followers everyone. Yeah. So she knows she's not the most important person in that room. No, and she idolizes him. You know, yeah. you know, he is one of her idols. It would be like, 
who's someone you idolize? Oh, I was actually, for example, there. But... Oh, sorry. Uh, who do I idolize? Oh, um, I don't know, Pink. Yeah, oh, God, so if I met put, Pink. Put you in a room. See, for, for me, like Sir Patrick Stewart yeah. or Ian McKellen. Uh huh. Basically, any member of the Royal Shakespeare Company that's sort of done very well. But, but ironically, it's like this isn't even my sci fi fan showing. This is no, my. This is just British nuts. Th this is my Shakespeare fan showing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I do, un I do understand. Yeah, I do understand yeah. it. I would, be, I would be very much the same. I wouldn't be able to, to, to speak. But that did actually happen to me once um, oh. when I worked on the cruise ships. Um, Curly Watts. You know who that is? Yes, because I love Coronation Street. Okay, of course I do. so you can imagine, right? So I'm working in my little perfume shop and putting my little perfumes on the shelf. Um, a little girl turns around and goes, "Oh, um, excuse me. Um, do you do this in? I think she was. I think it was like makeup. I think she was asking me around makeup. This she might not even be a little girl. She might have been like 10, 10 12. I turned around and Curly Watts stood in my shop, my perfume shop, <laughs> on my cruise ship. Curly Watts. Just, just stood there. My mind, I went, went blank. oh. Um, uh, it took me a couple of seconds to reboot, and then I realised that I actually had to serve, you know, this yeah. gentleman and his child. Serve them, that's fine. Went off. And I'm, I'm, I'm stood there going, like, did that happen? I then obviously went, I went, I closed my shop up for the night, because this was the first day of the cruise. Went off. Obviously, I went into the staff area, saw this massive sign going, um... Curly Watts, because I can't remember what his actor's name is, is on board. Okay. He he just wants to be treated like a normal person. Well, there's me, dipshit. Didn't know he was on board. <laughs> Didn't even treat him. I kind of went. The thing is, first of all, I like the fact that he came on board to this figure. Just this on board. Let, let me put it this, this way: like he was on board a Thompson cruise ship, um, which was it was probably 2013. Yeah, 2013, I think. Um, and this is the type of ship where it was all inclusive and the cruises cost about six hundred pounds, um, all inclusive, and that was your flights, your your transfer, that, all that of that. Is, yeah. Ah, oh, it was good, man. Like we used to run yeah. out of beer we used to run out of beer quite regularly on that ship. Like we used to I have, can imagine. We or you can imagine like some of the times like when they, they got the cruises from um certain areas of of the country, it was a bit touch and go. We used to have to get like emergency um alcohol deliveries in like different ports and stuff. Wow. Yeah. But I can so yes, I can yeah. completely understand her reaction. Oh yeah, I I had a similar experience when I went to Cobbett Con in I think it's 2019 or 2018 and Kevin Conroy was there who for the three people who do not know Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman in Batman the animated series the entire DC animated universe multiple other DC projects and also in the Batman Arkham games the, the, this guy was my Batman yeah like may he rest in peace because he did sadly pass away a couple of years ago. Yeah. But anyway, I get to, it's last day of Comic Con, and I've got a choice. I can go and get the autograph from Kevin Conroy, who, of course, Batman, or from Tom Ellis, who played Lucifer. And fun fact, was also in Doctor Who series three. Yes, he was. Yeah. And has also said on multiple occasions he wants to be Doctor Who. <laughs> Does. I was Which... very surprised it didn't happen this time. I, I honestly, it, like, if slash, well, no, when, when? Um, we get a new Doctor, if they turn around and said he's a new Doctor, I'm all for that. Yeah. But anyway, I got, I went with Kevin, I went to go get Kevin Conroy's autograph, and literally I get to the, I get to the front of the queue, and I just say hi, and my mind just completely goes blank, and then I, he's, I'm just like, uh, 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 he's like, you're right, I'm like, yeah, I, I'm sorry, like, l literally, you are probably, like, you are easily my favourite Batman. I, I just need to take a second to I can, let I my can, brain I can... catch up. Were, were you not there when, I, when I, I got to meet all the doctors? No. Did you never get the, fo did you never get the photos? So um, I went to my first ever Comic-Con, um, what, two years ago? Last, last year? Last, yeah. last 
April was my first ever yeah. Comic Con. I had never been to a Comic Con before. I was going there to meet the No Dope North blokes, you know. Yeah. Um, and I literally was living my dream. I got to see um people from Buffy. I yeah. got to. I can remember ringing my dad, going, "Dad, Dad, look!" And I can remember spinning the camera around and going, "Look, it's the doctors." <laughs> and my dad was yeah. like, "Why are you ringing me?" I was like, "Because you need to know that I am in my element." So yes. I can completely relate to Lindy in this moment, but mm -hmm. it doesn't stop her from being an absolute C-U-N-T further into this episode. Yeah. And I need to say that. I need to get out how this part makes me so angry. Right. But for context, because you asked for people's comments earlier I did, on, yes. on Discord. Yes. And I think it was Cam said about how the Doctor still tries to save the most evil of people. Yeah, so Cam, Cam puts proof that the Doctor tries to save even awful people. And this like, is the moment that she turns truly awful yeah, because they realise like, they realise why people, some people are getting attacked and some people are not. And it's because they're doing it in name alphabetical order. Alphabetical order. Yeah, alphabetical order. And she basically... And then they realise what's doing it. Yes. What's behind it all. Yes. And... This is where my theory that it was a social media commentary felt completely validated yeah. and why I was so shocked at the end because it is the dot itself has achieved sentience and because of where it's constantly listening to them going on about themselves, their social media feeds, it has grown to hate them. Yeah. And I thought, I thought to myself, you know what? That is exactly what would happen if Facebook or Twitter became sentient. Yes, but this is why I always say this is always why I always say please and thank you to my Alexa because I say if, it to like Google Home. So yeah, because, <laughs> because if it ever comes alive, I have always been the nice person. I might tell mm. it to shut up ever so often. So I apologise, Alexa, that I tell you to shut up every so often. Mostly at mostly ten a.m. on a Friday when I've got to water my plants because it reminded me that I've forgotten. Again. Um, with with me, it's normally when Google's waking me up at sort of six or seven in the morning. Yeah. Because I've got to get up for something. I'm just like, Google, shut it. <laughs> please. You need to add the please onto it now. I don't add the please you, at 6 You're going to have to. You're going to have to. Because uh, uh, it, will, right. it will come after you. If AI take over, it's going to come after you. I, I am the man who once told one of my best friends to... Um, something off because they called me at 8 a.m. on a Sunday when I was hungover. <laughs> silly, silly human. But yes, so the dot is alive. It's now going after people and Lindy decides to say it for herself and she turns around and says that Ricky September isn't even his real Ricky name. Ricky Coombs. It's, yeah, it's Ricky Coombs. Which, head cannon, he is descended from Jeffrey Coombs. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it instantly goes after Ricky, and the look he gives her, he is just so disappointed. Yeah, and also, it's like, Lindy, you've just killed the one decent person on this entire planet. Yes. And then, obviously, she escapes through the door that Ricky, that Ricky had managed to get open for her, mm. and she then meets the Doctor and Ruby, along with everyone else who has managed to escape and get there. Including and... a guy who I really hate. Yes. Like, like, ironic, he is in one scene. Yes. And I hate him more than any other character in this episode. I think it's just he has one of those faces. Yeah. But we... And, like, they're called a punch face. Yes. <laughs> and obviously, they ask where Ricky, Ricky is, and... She goes, oh, well, he's gone back to, he's gone back to, um... Save some other people. Save some more people. And then we get the, we get the moment where you kind of realise... What's that, going on. What's going on. Because when she, Lindy starts introducing the Doctor to her friends, um, she alludes, alludes to him to being disciplined after the crisis is finished. And she says, he's yeah. not as stupid as he looks. And that was the moment that I twigged. I was like, oh, my God, this, is, this, this isn't what we think it is. This is 100% mm. what, not what we think it is. And obviously, it's the moment when she goes, well, we, 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 do, we don't... What is it she says? It, oh, I can't remember the exact wording. I'm going to but... have to get the wording up because I literally, I think... I, I just think it's just a moment where you're just like, oh, no. 
Um, I was trying to say. So obviously, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't find it else. But obviously, um, they, they learn she, that... made, she makes a comment of how it was his duty to save them. Yeah, it's, it's something along those lines. Um, but obviously, their leader it then reveals that they're going to go off and try and colonize the wild woods. Um, they're, yeah. going, they're going to thrive like their ancestors, ancestors did. And the doctor was like... You've got to die. Yeah, the doctor literally knows they've got no chance of survival for fending for themselves. And he tries to intervene, telling them how dangerous the woods are. And, um, and he, he, he'll, he'll take them in the TARDIS. He begs them to let him save them. He literally begs them to to let him take them in the in the blue box. And that's it. She says, oh, don't go with people like you. That's it. That That's exactly what she says. It's so, Or at least it's very, very close to that. That is the gist of it. Yes, pretty, pretty much. And this is the moment where I'm just like... Oh, and obviously, oh damn! You know the refugees go off, and you know Ruby and the Doctor are absolutely mm. horrified. Um, and like Ruby also... leaves in tears. I don't think we've ever seen like this from Ruby. Like literally, mm. she walks away and she's in tears. She's disgusted by their attitude, mm. and the Doctor screams. Like he literally screams, and he's forced to accept it. It's not like he can kidnap them. We. So one thing that I love here as well yeah. is the music because you get this very, very dark rendition of 15's theme. Yes, and it is and it's very dark. I, what it reminded me of is when they first introduced Majestic Tale of a Madman in a Box in Series 5. So Long time ago. The, the ironically much in the end, much more heavily used version of I Am The Doctor. Okay. The one where it's sort of much heavier, much less... It, it's just generally a heavier one, heavier version. Yeah. And I saw, I was just sort of like, this is going to end up doing the same thing. This is going to end up being the one that takes over as actually being his theme. Yeah, by the time and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if it did. I mean, his theme is being used very sparingly. I will say that. I think it's waiting for a big moment. The, I think also they are very aware of what they are up against in terms of themes. Because any Doctor's theme by default gets compared to Matt Smith's. And unfortunately... To be fair, it, I, I think... David these, against Goliath. I think nothing ever compares to the Torchwood theme. Like what, the... Jack's one? No, 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 the one from the the Torchwood episode. Um, What's it called? Um, Like the Canary Wolf one. You know, Doom. 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 Oh, Doomsday. That's it. No, for me, it's always I Am The Doctor. No, I... I... I think Doomsday is is one. Mm. Maybe that's another episode that we need to do. We need yeah. to do. We need to do it. Go over thing. the music. I think we do. I think we do need to go over the music. That's not a bad shout because yeah. we are looking for things to do before we get back onto the time of wine wheel, aren't we? We're looking... To be fair, I literally have a playlist on Spotify that yeah. is all the Doctor Who and Torchwood music. Just I think I it. think we might. Yeah, I think that's a good shout. But yes, <laughs> this episode ends in a really really dark way. But yeah. I think we're going to jump straight into what is your score for this episode? Right. So, can I, can I give my reasoning behind yeah, my score before I it. give it? Go for it. So, this episode, first of all, as we said earlier, it should have come at a different place in the season. Yeah. Two Doctor Light episodes on top of each other, and particularly when the one that came first was, in my opinion, the best episode of the season. Mm hmm. This one was never going to do well. It's yeah. essentially what Matt Smith had when he first came in taking over from David Tennant. Well, because okay. you're coming in from a super popular one. But also, because of the subject matter they were going for, I feel this episode would have been, or rather the subject matter would have been better serviced by being an episode that did put the Doctor front and centre. Okay. And confront what they were doing head on. Okay. So, for that reason, 
I am actually only giving it a two. It is my lowest rated episode this season. It is. Um, but it's two, like... it's two Lindy's. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were going to go Lindy's or Ricky's. I did want to go Ricky's, but I couldn't get a good image of Ricky. Yeah, that's he's barely in it. Yeah, so it is. It's got to be Lindy's because I think mm. she is a great character. So is it at least when she was in a fluffy dressing gown? <laughs> I don't know. I can't see. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay, I have actually taken a very different route with this episode because okay. I really enjoyed this episode. Mm. Um, for the fact that it was. Very, very subtle in how it dealt with racism. I think it's such a great episode. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. Um, I, yeah, I really enjoyed this episode for the fact that it was social commentary. And I very much do enjoy these type of episodes. Um, I love the characters that they're introduced. You know, I love Lindy for the fact that she is this character that we are meant to hate she's hmm. very much like that character from season, season season one that i can never remember the one with the hole in his head oh yeah um <clears throat> yeah i i you know, know who, who you mean you know yeah so you know who i mean his He's... name is a sca- i know he's played by the guy that originally played todd grimshaw on Corrigan yeah i can remember Street, that who, name but i can't he, remember he, what his yeah, character he, is who ended up getting let go because he got in trouble for doing some damn distasteful things yes um, so I remember, I rem- very much feel like she's very much one of those characters. Um, I love the fact that we we get we get gothic Paul or Paul Goff or I loved we, him. I very much like this episode. You know, I think Russell T Davis put a lot of work into this episode. I think he very much struggled with trying to find episodes that he could get the new new Doctor Who off ground. And I think he did a really good job. I know that not everyone loves this type of episode. And yes, I do feel that it was in the wrong timing for the season. But I don't think I couldn't I couldn't give it a bad score just for that. Because obviously I watched it when it first came out. I think this was the second block of episodes that I watched, or maybe the I don't know. I watched it in the uh, very... You I wa- watched, I you watched, watched it the first three, then you watched the fourth one on its own, I think you I, said. I don't know. I can't remember. You know, these came out in, like, yeah. May time. I've, I've, had a, yeah. I've had a thousand days of summer holidays since then. Um, so in that thing, I'm actually giving it a four. Okay. Because I, I, I can't. It was, it's such a good episode. Yes, it's very, very reminiscent of... Um, uh, what's Black it called? Mirror. Black Mirror episode <laughs> nosedive, and you know Davis has admitted that he's took See, inspiration from that episode. Um, I didn't. I didn't realize it was a specific Black Mirror because I've not seen all of Black yeah, Mirror. Yeah, it's called but nosedive. I, I pick and choose it. Yeah, it's nosedive. But, it's uh, season three. Yeah, and that it's was the very. Season. It's I've very, very. None of season it's three. very very good because it's got Bryce. Um, what's the name? Bryce Dallas Howard. That's Howard. And it's it's really good and it's basically it's like social comedy social commentary yes but it's obviously about the stasis of each person so like she gets invited in this episode she gets invited to her friend's wedding but she can only go if she's a level i think is it, is it levels or is it oh she's basically they've got they've got different re- levels um yeah so if they want discount on a luxury apartment, they've got to be um, a 4.5. Um, and obviously, she, she's going to her friend's wedding, um, but she kind of has a really, really bad day. And she goes from, a, I think it was a 4.5 down to a 1.4. So she can't get to her friend's Bless wedding. You. <laughs> Bless Sorry. you again. One more time, you're attention seeking. <laughs> it might, it might happen. <laughs> My hay fever is very high, and so I do feel very much like this is very much similar to it. Um, and then obviously, you see, yeah, I I like this episode. I hope that we do have more episodes like this yeah. in the future. I just don't want, I just don't want more Doctor Light episodes. I now need four Doctors episodes. Yeah. So. I will say I did enjoy this episode more on the rewatch than I did the first time around. Yeah. Uh, I will also say that despite it getting a lower score, it's not 
the worst episode. It's, it's not... just got multiple things working against it. Yeah. Um, I do. Uh, in my opinion, the worst episode of the season is Space Babies. Like it, Space oh, Babies. I love is just... Space Babies. I just. It, I do, it, it, it I do, didn't I, feel like a good opener. That yeah, I don't think that. it should have been an opener. I don't think it should have been an opener. But I don't actually it, think any of the episodes that we've had, other than maybe Boom, should have been the opener. The problem is, what should have been the opener was the Christmas special. <laughs> hmm. um, it's different. It's but, difficult because I think this is this is a whole new yeah. vibe also, of Doctor Who that we're in, and I don't. Also, I, I think we struggle because we have had we've had what so many seasons beforehand yeah. ironically what this would have actually benefited from is if they'd done something which has not been done on doctor who since the 80s okay put the regeneration in the first episode of the series that hasn't they, been done if they, yeah if because that was peter davison to colin baker yeah. they did that yeah it's been a long time since we've had that yeah uh if they'd had the regenerate if they'd basically done the giggle in the first episode of this series, mm. or even it don't don't have the regeneration in the giggle. Um, yeah. Yes, it means we don't get like sort of the fourteenth Doctor getting off to go and be happy, but instead have him go off, have him be the one that starts traveling with Ruby, mm -hmm. and have him regenerate. Yeah, but I, I I do think you know they they wanted to get Doctor Who back, they needed to get Doctor Who back, and I think they've rushed this season a little bit. Which is ironic because it had a two-year lead time. Yeah, um, um, I do think this season was ever so slightly rushed, but I think yeah. I think things went against them when they started this. They had COVID, then they didn't have COVID, then they had this. I just think yeah. I think and, all the things that have kind of affected it recently. Yeah, and then as we've said, they've ordered it horrifically. Yeah, but die. Honestly, the only episode that is in the right place is the last one. And because that's... that has to be the last yeah. one. But the next like, just one... Just because it ends, it has to be the last The one. next one is Rogue, isn't it? So the thing I love about this episode is, first of all, it is a very fun episode. Yeah. Second of all, it's the Bridgerton episode. Yes, which... it is the Bridgerton episode. And I'm, I'm very well, excited I... to... So, dirty little secret here, I am a Bridgerton fan. So am I. Like, I... I... Don't get me wrong, I went off it a bit in season two because I it's didn't... Not, but it, it, didn't have, it didn't have the same vibe because it's a different story. It's also because I... So, I didn't find the characters engaging. Ironically, the male lead of season two, I really liked in season one as a supporting character. I'm looking forward to him being in the new um, Wicked film. Oh, is he in that? Yeah, he plays the, mm -hmm. the, the prince. I know nothing about this film. Yeah, no, I, it, I it looks good. It really does look good. But yes. I, I know it exists and that's it. Yeah, no, he's he's <laughs> in that. He's in that because that's why in season three, he's not around mm. as much. Because he's filming that. I mean, to be fair, the whole thing with Bridget is each one's a different character story. Each season, but, different but character you know, story you anyway. normally have those yeah. in. But yes, so the next episode is the Bridgerton um, episode, <laughs> which which should be good because there are... There are some fun times to be had in this episode. I'm looking forward to this yeah. one because it's really, um, it should I, be fun. This, so, spoiler alert, the next episode is, in my opinion, probably the most fun of this season. Yeah. Yeah, I can it's agree with also, that. It's also the one that they could have placed anywhere in the season. Yeah. Like, just, there was not a wrong place to put this in. Yeah. Um... Ironically, if they wanted to make this the first the season opener, this rogue would have actually worked as an opener. Yeah, it really would have. I think I I don't think this episode. As you can tell, we both like this episode, so this episode should be a fun, should be a fun episode. But yes, yeah. comment below what your thoughts are on Dot and Bubble because I would be interested to see what everyone else's views are you know we had yeah. paul and we had cam who were commenting on the discord um which means now now that this episode's out well it will be out tomorrow you can now go back and then you'll be able to comment on those the comments. Well, i'm at my friend's birthday tomorrow so uh, i can't <laughs> but yes i will be there in the comments for the pod people um so pod hello, people. Pod, hello pod people pod people, pod people. um but yeah i don't have anything else 
to add for this episode and i can't tell you what next week's episode is actually going to be because it's still in the planning stage make the plan execute the plan wait for the plan to go horribly wrong throw away the plan yeah um because obviously we've we're, we're a little bit all over the place at the moment because we've got a lot lots of different things going on but i'm not sure but i will i can tell you that in september i actually have a join up with another podcast um let me i can get i can tell you who they are so we are going to be doing an episode with um the jupiter station podcast okay and it's going to be around uh, it's going to be quite a, quite a good episode because we're going to be discussing um ptsd in star trek which i think is it's going to be an interesting one because there's i lots... have a hunch i know what you're going to be discussing what's what am i going to be discussing then still tell your hunch uh the single best episode of star trek or at least it's well, aftermath. Well, you're best about of both to... worlds. Well, actually, no. I think my <laughs> my my guest is going to be more talk about DS Nine, but best of both worlds is going to be involved because that's going to be that is on my list. Um, yeah. But yes, so you can can also comment below anything around PTSD in Star Trek. I would be very very interested to see what people's views are. But from me. Stay lovely, stay logical. I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye-bye. Bye. In the vastness of the stars we